Throughout American history, U.S. presidents have been called upon to defuse racial tension at times of civil unrest. On Saturday, President Trump first addressed the carnage from Charlottesville, Virginia from over the weekend. We condemn in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence on many sides. On many sides. To his critics, the president's statement was considered weak and equivocal. Two days later, he spoke again, this time explicitly condemning the racists and Nazi sympathizers who marched in Charlottesville. Racism is evil, and those who cause violence in its name are criminals and thugs, including the KKK, neo-Nazis, white supremacists, and other hate groups that are repugnant to everything we hold dear as Americans. Many of his critics were not appeased, saying that President Trump had not risen to the occasion the way his predecessors had when responding to racially tinged social unrest. Here's a look at some of those statements. As you know, the Supreme Court of the United States has decided that separate public educational facilities for the races are inherently unequal and therefore compulsory school segregation laws are unconstitutional. Our personal opinions about the decision have no bearing on the matter of enforcement. Mob rule can not be allowed to override the decisions of our courts. Wanton destruction of life and property is not a legitimate expression of outrage with injustice. It is itself injustice. And no rationalization, no matter how heartfelt, no matter how eloquent, can make it otherwise. Television has become a medium that often brings us together. But its vivid display of Rodney King's beating shocked us. And the America it has shown us on our screens these last 48 hours has appalled us. None of this is what we wish to think of as American. It's as if we were looking in a mirror that distorted our better selves and turned us ugly. Well, first of all, I, I, as to the jury verdict, I have nothing to add to what I said after the last jury verdict. We have a system here in this country which I think we should all respect. Only, the only people who heard all the evidence were the people who were sitting in the jury box in both cases. And the civil trials and criminal trials are very different in different ways, so I, I have nothing to add to that. I respect the jury verdict. Uh, and on, in terms of the way Americans see the world differently, generally, based on their race, uh, th that troubles me. I think the only answer to that is for us to spend more time listening to each other and try to, un try to put ourselves in each other's shoes and understand why we see the world in different ways uh, and keep trying to overcome that. Uh, we have succeeded so far in managing the world's most multi-ethnic diverse uh, democracy uh, better than a lot of countries that are smaller than we are with fewer differences within them. There is never an excuse for violence against police or for those who would use this tragedy as a cover for vandalism or looting. There's also no excuse for police to use excessive force against peaceful protests uh, or to throw protesters in jail for lawfully exercising their First Amendment rights. But let's remember that we're all part of one American family. Uh, we are united in common values, and that includes belief uh, in equality under the law, a basic respect for public order, and the right to pe uh, peaceful public protest, a reverence for the dignity of every single man, woman, and child among us, uh, and uh, the need for uh, accountability when it comes to our government.